Hey everybody, welcome to episode one of our Friday informational series. Um, today we're going to be going over um, the Viking tarot deck and in this episode we're going to focus on the major arcana. Um, now as I mentioned before in our introduction video, um, the major arcana is represented by the Acer, which is considered the supreme gods in Norse mythology. So we're going to start with the first one, which is the Fool. That's the card there. This card is represented by Loki. Now, for those of you who don't know um, much about Norse mythology, um, Loki was considered the deceiver. Um, he was a companion and ruin of the Aesir. Now, he wasn't evil, um, but he was capable of causing his own conscious destructions by his own actions. Um, this card represents unexpected behavior, um, eccentricity, trips, a lack of understanding. In the little booklet that comes with it, it, it states, When the mind transcends intelligence, madness occurs. Now, this isn't an evil card um, that comes up. It's not going to be, oh, well, you just don't understand anything, and, you know, you're deceiving people or you're being deceived. <clears throat> It's just one of those that, you know, if things are going really good, self-doubt could cause um, you to self-destruct. It happens. Um, or if you're in a situation where you're being told constantly you're not good enough, anything like that, um, this is what this card could represent. So moving on to the next card here is the Magician. Now, the Magician is represented by Tyr. Now, I will apologize now if I butcher any names. Um, I'm not fluent in the names. I speak them as they're phonetically written. So, I do apologize now. Feel free to leave a comment correcting me if you like to. Um, like I said, I'm just going by how it's written. <clears throat> so, the... Magician, like I said, is represented by Tyr, T-Y-R. Um, the wisest and most courageous of the gods um, presides over the assemblies. Um, he had a wolf, um, Fenrir. Um, he had the wolf eat out of his hand so that he could conquer him. Um, he's also um, considered the um, guarantor of cosmic order. Um, this card represents diplomacy, skill, um, Initi initiative, um, start of undertakings. Um, it's a good card. It shows that if this should come up, you know, skills that you have are useful to you. You have a lot of skills, like a jack of all trades in a way. Um, you start many different projects not saying you finish them, but you start them. You have the skills able to start those um, those tasks that you're looking for. Our next card here is the High Priestess. And the High Priestess here is represented by Frigg. Now, Frigg was the wife of Odin. Um, she was a good judge of destiny, but was not considered a prophetess. Um, she's known as the Goddess of Wisdom. Um, a lot of people um, who pray to Norse deities, it is Ogen, Odin and Frigg, um, a lot of it for the wisdom. Um, her home is in the swamp, but she has golden sandals and dresses like a hawk, which allows her to fly anywhere. Um, this card represents a mature woman, feminine mysteries, intuition, and a tendency to avoid ties. Um, you're independent, you are, you're free. Um, now it's not saying you you know you're not gonna if this card comes up you're you're not gonna be tied down, but it could be one of those you're going to make decisions that allow you to be you, to be the freedom to, or have the freedom to make the choices that you want to make. Right, our next card here is the Empress, and the Empress is represented by Saga. Um, Saga is an older goddess than Frigg, and as with Ul, um, I 
Oh, I still lost my train of thought. I do apologize. <laughs> um, no, so she's an older goddess than Frigg. Than Frigg. Um, she's a symbol of fertility. Over the centuries, her name became uh, synonymous with woman. So this card represents woman, mother, fertility, the feminine origin of love. This card, it, it represents the motherly instinct, um, fertility. If this could come up, and they could show um, a love in your future, a love in your past, present, um, a child, like I said, fertility, uh, possible children, things like that. And again, it's in the interpretation, and it depends where it comes in the spread as well. Um, so that is the Empress card. All right, so our next card in the Major Arcana is the Emperor card. Um, it is represented by Uller. Uller was a more ancient ruler than Odin. Um, he's considered a hunter and a patron of duels. Um, he represents a supreme character and organizer of creation. Um, this card actually represents powerful and generous protector, a father, a father-like figure, authority, also solver of material problems. So like the Empress card with Saga, um, this card would represent... Um, father figure um a masculine authority um either over you your life someone you look up to plays that role now it could also represent um issues with a person in that role um again depends on the spread questions ask how the card is um, things like that so that's the emperor card Right, and the next card is the Hierophant, and that is actually represented by Odin. Now, Odin was the Lord of the Runes, Master of Magic and Destiny. Um, he's considered a cosmic deity, mysterious and sinister god with an unshakable will. Um, Odin was actually had one eye because he sacrificed it in order to drink from the Fountain of Knowledge. He's the patron of magicians, warriors, and poets. Now, if you don't know the story of Odin, um, he sacrificed his eye at um, Ygrussel, and he wanted the wisdom. He wanted the knowledge. He was shown the original runes. Uh, there's 18 of them. And because of the sacrifice, it made him wiser. Now, this card actually represents um, magical or religious power, spiritual guidance, um, invincible destiny now again depending on the spread um, this could mean any number of things it's just how it's interpreted um, a lot of times when this is pulled it shows great wisdom um, you have a path you have a, a power inside you that sometimes you keep in you're not aware of that um, or that you do have a spiritual guide and you're going through that path that you were destined to go through. All right, so our next card in our major arcana here is the lover's card. The lover's card is represented by Frigg, Vili, and V. So when Odin left Asgard for a few years, Vili and V were his or are his brothers. Um, and they actually took over his throne, and upon doing so, they took his wife as well as a lover. So this card actually represents um, several things: a contract, rules, um, test, um, an important job or emotional choice. Um, it's not one of those, you know, you pull the lover's card. You're like, oh, yeah, relationship. No, um, it's more of, from what I see it, uh, depending on the spread. And, you know, it's going to be, there's an emotional choice you have to make. You may not, with making this, it might hurt somebody or multiple people. It's, some, it's a choice that you have to make that's going to have emotional consequences to it. So that is the lover's card. The next card here is the chariot. And it's actually represented by the chariot of Thor. 
Um, Thor is the god of the storm. We all know of Thor and Thor's hammer. He sails the sky with his chariot of war, symbol of triumph, divine power, triumphant divine power, excuse me. Um, he does, it's pulled by two goats um, whose steps announce the storm. I'm not going to pronounce the names of those. I will butcher them. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> so um, this card actually represents a victory, success, um, acknowledgement of merits and honors and security. Um, so again, it all depends on the spread and how um, this card plays out. Um, but it could be showing that, you know, your choices that you made were successful. You're going to have a success coming. Um, a conflict that you've been having will end successfully. You'll have a victory over it. All right, so that's the, the chariot. Our next card here is strength. And strength is represented by Thor. Um, he is the top representative of divine strength. He was also tempted through deception to lift the serpent that enveloped the world that the gigantic king Utgard Loki had transformed into an enormous cat. Thor sowed panic among those present by managing to lift one of the giant feline paws, almost destroying the earth with its strength. Again, if you're unfamiliar with the story, I advise you to um, read uh, Norse mythology. Um, there's wonderful stories in there. I'll actually put a link down in the description of a book that I absolutely enjoy. Um, so this card represents courage, energy, defense of a just cause, and strength of the mind. Um, just as the car says strength and it doesn't have to be physical strength it can be mental and emotional strength um, when this card's drawn it's usually um, to show that whatever you're going through you're going to have the the energy strength and courage to get through it um, I've seen spreads where strength and chariot are pulled um, right after each other showing that you know this problem you will have a victory, but you're going to need that strength and you will have it. All right, so our next card in the Major Arcana is the Hermit. And the Hermit is represented by Heimdall. He was the guardian of the Aesir. He was the god who sits at the end of the skies, who has a very sharp eyesight and very keen hearing. He is in an everlasting search for some sign that announces the beginning of Ragnarok. Now, I'm not going to go into Ragnarok. Um, that might be another series that I do about Norse mythology. Um, again, you can look it up if you have any questions or I'll be happy to discuss it with you. Um, so the meaning of this card is there's research, wisdom, prudence, detachment from material things. No wisdom's come up before on another card. Again, it, it depends what you get. Um, this card to me represents um, the constant need for wisdom. And it's more spiritual. Um, you move away from the material things and you look at what you have in life. Um, the Hermit card to me, when pulled, um, again, uh, depending on the spread and the question and what we're looking at, um, the thirst for wisdom. You're going to continue to research on your path so you can gain that knowledge, and it's not a material knowledge. Like I said, this is the detachment from material things. All right, so our next card here is the wheel. Now, the wheel is represented by the Norns. Verdandi, Skuld, and Urder are the most well-known Norns. They are the guardians of destiny. Um, they visit women in labor and mark the future of their unborn child. They define the child's needs during life and accompany the child at the moment of death. Think of it as the fates. I'm sure you're aware of the fates. 
um, the representation of this card uh, means fortune, destiny, chance, and natural cycles. Um, if you are familiar with the fates, you know, you have your fate line and, you know, you have the three fates in past, present, and future. Um, so this card basically is, you know, your journey. Uh, it's a natural, you know, natural life cycle. The birth, how I do it, birth, life, death. You're born, you live your life, you die, and then it starts all over again. It's a circle. So, you know, with, with pulling this card, it could be something, you know, um, you may need to take a chance on something. Yeah, you're doing what is fated, but, and you're not taking any chances. You're going along the life as it is destined and planned out. You should take a chance. Um, or, or it could mean that, you know, you are the maker of your destiny. Yes, your path is created at birth. And that is if you make, you don't take a chance. Your destiny is written. Without any chances, you're going to go the exact same way it's written out. You make a chance, you cause a fork in that, in that destiny. And from that fork, another outcome, and so forth. So that's the meaning to me behind this card. So our next card here is Justice. And it is represented by Forseti. Um, he is the god who presides over disputes and is the symbol of justice. His home is called Glitner. And tradition has it that it is the best court for men and gods. And so this card um, has a meaning of law, equilibrium, logical consequences, equity. Just as this is justice. You know, something happens and there's a dispute, whether it be in the household, between friends, co-workers, whatever. This card shows that there will be logical consequences. You know, something's going to happen, or, you know, justice is served. And it may not be something you like. Just just because you don't like it doesn't mean that it's, it's not just. Right, our next card is the Hanged Man. And it's represented by Vali. Vali was the son of Odin. He was born already an adult and armed in order to avenge the death of Baldr. He was one of the few gods who would live beyond the end of the world, becoming perhaps the new god of justice. So the meaning of this card is atonement, utopia, a punishment, and act of destiny. So he was, well, you have your justice card um, with the hanged man. Um, it's your punishment, good or bad. Um, this was your, you know, if you have your justice, you have to have the act of carrying out that justice, whether it be, you know, the punishment, so to speak. So this card, I mean, to me is, you know, it's pulled. You're going to go through something. You may not like the outcome. You may not like the punishment that is dealt. But it, it, it's a consequence for a decision that was made, a chance that was taken, um, and and it, it's an like it says here, an act of destiny. You take a chance, it doesn't work out. There's going to be consequences, good or bad. Well, even if it if it doesn't work out, for example, okay, you decide, you know what. I'm going to take this chance, and I'm going to play the lottery. That's a chance. You play the lottery, 
you don't win. Well, your consequence of that is you're out one, two bucks, or however much you spend on your ticket, that you could have used for something else. What good could come from that? Well, if somebody wins, what if that person had nothing? They only had that dollar, and they played, and they won. Well, that little bit of money you put in helped them. So while it might be bad for you, it's good for somebody else. While it's bad for somebody else, it could be good for you. I know it probably doesn't make sense. Again, a lot of the interpretation as well happens within the card spread. We could be talking about your future here, and they could just mean that, okay, you're going to have to atone for a decision you made. You're going to have to dish out the punishment for something that was done. Yeah, and it depends on the spread on that. All right, moving on. Our next card is the death card. I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, death. That means I'm going to die. Someone's going to die. Not necessarily. So, the death card is actually represented by the Valkyries. The, the, the Valkyries accompanied the spirits of warriors into Valhalla after their death. Um, they marked the passage from one state to another, the transformation from a, who was a brave warrior during life to champion of the gods after death. Um, the transition coveted by every Viking. Oh, Vikings, that's what they lived for. You died in battle. That's why they were made... I mean, to some of the best warriors. They didn't fear death. They welcomed it. They would rather die in ba battle to go to Valhalla than die of sickness. If they died in battle, they, they felt that you know, they would go to Valhalla and they would be this great champion. Um for the gods after death. But if you didn't die in battle, um, that's why suicide wasn't, from what my understanding, suicide was not big then because if you took your own life, you weren't a champion. If you died from being sick, you weren't really a champion. You couldn't, you know, couldn't overcome the sickness. But anyways, and so this card, while it could represent death, it represents um, end an ending, close, um, sudden change, or radical transformation. So this could be the end of a business adventure or a sudden change in you. For example, okay, you're... You know, Every day, Monday through Friday, same schedule. You can get up, get ready, eat breakfast, go to work, come home, make dinner, go to bed, start all over the next day. Everything is planned out. You lose your job. That's a sudden change. Your schedule is all messed up now. You're doing something different. Um, you take on a, an adventure. You start your own business. You start a new relationship. You end in a relationship. Doesn't that necessarily mean you or somebody's going to die? I saw our next card here is Temperance. And Temperance is represented by Balder. Um, now, with Balder, his death will mark the beginning of Ragnarok. And Balder is the god of light the symbol of perpetual change as a warning of the beginning of the end of time. Balder will be killed, resuscitated, and will fight in the final war in order to allow the world to be born again and to begin a new golden age where he will be the father of the new gods. Um, with, with this, it was... He would be the father of the new gods, um, 
because of his sacrifice of blood is is what that that's meaning there um so with this meaning um it's the ability to adapt um change harmony uh moderation um it's more of you know you you make a move and you adapt to your new surroundings to the climate change um you're more apt to do things more in moderation to provide um, an inner harmony. Um, whether it's, you know, work, family, life itself, things like that. Um, so that's what temperance stands for there. And so the next card is... the devil not what you think so the the devil card is represented by hotter a lot of people say hoder it's h-o-d-r um he was deceived by loki um he was blind um so he ends up hurl he will hurl a twig of mistletoe at Balder, which is the only weapon that's capable of killing him. <clears throat> he will actually become the scapegoat of the gods. Although not directly guilty, he will be convicted and killed and will go down to hell. H E L. Um, with Balder, well he will await uh, resurrection with him. So the devil represents deceit, illegal actions, doubtful morality, guiltiness. And it doesn't have to be a physical thing. It, it could be emotional. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be anything major either. You know, for example, something minor. You were speeding. You saw, you were speeding and another car was right there with you. And that other car gets pulled over. Were they speeding because of you? Yep. Maybe. I'm the one who, I go with the flow of traffic. If the car in front of me is going faster, I'm, I'm going to do it too. I'm going to stay with the flow. Well, if I get pulled over and you don't, well, you weren't being deceitful or anything. But, you know, there is a little bit of, of, of guiltiness there. But like, did I, I cause that? Not meaning to. But it happens. Um, it's not a bad card. None of these cards are bad cards. Um, again, I don't know how much I can emphasize this. It depends on the spread, the questions, where it's at, anything like that. It could just simply mean that, you know, something in your life is deceiving you. Something like that. All right, so our next card here is the Tower. Now, the tower is represented by Asgard. It's a splendid home of the gods. It was a symbol of their power and their arrogance. The gods punished the request of the giant who built the external walls because they were convinced of their superiority over the primitive race. Um, this celestial city will actually be the first to fall when it's time for Ragnarok. So with that little description there, um, might kind of spell out the meaning for you um, of the tower. It's arrogance, pride, uh, collapse of mistaken convictions, and deserved punishment. While it sounds bad, it may not be. It could tell you that, you know, something's going to happen to you because of arrogance. Um... If you're a prideful person, it, it can just show you that you're not as strong as you perceive yourself to be. You could, you're going to fall. Um, it could also, like I said, deserve punishment. You know, you wronged somebody. Karma is going to come back. You deserve it. Simple like that. Oh, well, these cards, you know, if you look at the tower. Well, why would the tower 
mean something like that. I don't make the meanings behind it. Um, it confused me when I first, I'm like, why would, I would think the tower would mean strength and, you know, but no, if you think about a castle in war, the tower is made of stone and bricks. It's going to fall. It's not permanent. So just think of it that way. Our next card here, we have about four more cards after this. This is the stars. The stars is represented by Yggdrasil, the ash tree. It's a cosmic tree, pillar of the universe, a plant that with its branches and roots connects all of the nine worlds. It's a symbol of the cosmos. Under him live the head of the giant Mimur the Wise, prophet and counselor of Odin and the Norns. He's the symbol of everything. Um, so this card actually represents potential, a good omen, bright ideas, and hope. Yggdrasil is known as the tree of life. Not many people realize that. Um, but in Norse mythology, that is, that was it. Um, all the worlds were connected within the, uh, the branches and roots. And that's life. Uh, so with this card, with, with it being drawn, it's a light of hope. So, you know, there is that light in there, you know, and not everything is going to be bad. Um, something good is going to come your way. I make it also show that you have a bright idea. If you have, you know, an idea at work that you're, you're like, oh, I don't know if this is good or not. And you ask the question and this card comes up. It, it might be a good idea. Bring it up. What do you have to lose? You know, there's that hope there. All right. Our next card is the moon. Now the moon is represented by Mani. The Vikings viewed masculine aspect in the moon and feminine aspect in the sun. Whereas in most uh, pagan religion, everybody views the moon as feminine and the sun as male. Vikings viewed it backwards. The moon is the nocturnal light that captures light and controls it. A magical being who dies and is born again for all eternity. Um, according to Viking myth, Mani was also a man who... Uh, while he was dying, gave himself to the sun and became its slave. So this card actually is, represents visions, magic, eccentricity, and mistakes due to whims. Um, it is, again, a masculine card. And... It, it would show that, you know... If you're, you're not making logical decisions, you're, you know, yeah, you're taking a chance, but if there's no logic behind it, it's just on a whim. Um, you, you can make mistakes. Mistakes are going to happen. Again, nobody's perfect. So, you know, with this card coming up, we could just show you, hey, you know, when you're, you're making decisions, try to make them logical. You're going or you're going to make mistakes. You'll have less mistakes if, and, you know, there's logic behind it. All right, we have the moon and then we have the sun. And the sun is represented by Saul. A young girl named Saul guides the chariot of the sun pulled by two horses. Um, the runes are cut onto the ears of the first horse as they are one of the hooves of the second horse. Between the legs of the horses, a bellow protects the young girl from the heat of the celestial body as does the shield that she carries on her shoulders. The wolf's skull follows the chariot and will swallow the sun at the end of time. So this card actually represents a solution to problems, agreement, happiness, collaboration. Um, again, like some other cards, you know, problems are going to happen. There is a solution. Now, it doesn't say the, this is what's going to happen. This is your solution. No, um, it's going to... 
tell you that there's going to be an agreement made. The, the problem is going to resolve. Um, things like that. Okay, our next card here is Judgment. So, Judgment is represented by Ragnarok. We are at the end of time. Balder will be killed and the ship made with his fingernails of the dead will cut across the skies. The sun and moon will be swallowed by wolves. Everyone will die except for a few gods who will begin a new golden age in the renewed world. Um, so this card actually represents time of transition towards improvement, renewal, healing, and recovery. So while Ragnarok would be considered the end, it's not. It's the end of a time. Um, it's going to transition into uh, a new time where it can be improved. And the same for you as a person. You know, pulling this card, you know, could show you that, you know, you could need to heal and recover from a broken heart or a loss or the end of something. Right, and our last card of the Major Arcana is the World card. And it is represented by Ymir. The primordial giant from whose body the world was born. His skull became the sky, his bones the mountains, from his feet the giants were born, from his hair the trees, from his blood the oceans, from his teeth the rocks, and from his flesh the dwarves. Men originated from the sweat of Ymir. If you don't know the creation story um, in Norse mythology, I truly, truly suggest looking it up. When I first read it, it was, wait, what? Um, it's rather funny, but I, I can understand it in a way. So what this card, when pulled, represents completion um, or a reward, a realization of an undertake, undertaking and a new beginning. Just as the, the world and everything on it and everyone on it was created, it was more or less a, a reward. It was a new beginning. And when this card's pulled, it's telling you that, you know, You've got things that will be completed. You will be rewarded from it. Um, it could be a new beginning. Um, your completion of one thing is going to be a new beginning of another. A lot of positivity comes from this card, in my opinion. Again, my perception. And there you have it. That is the major arcana of the viking tarot deck what i'm going to do is down in the description below i'm going to just give you um a short description of the cards basically um what the card is who represents it as well as um just what it represents not the story behind the representation just the um what it represents um that way you know you have it in writing um, I am going to be, well, no, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, wait, it's accessible to everybody. Now, next week, we're going to get into the minor or different sets. So we're just going to focus on one. Um, that way, we can go through those cards and basically the same thing. Um, again, down in the description, you'll also find the um, the book that I use for North Mythol North Norse. Sorry, I can't talk today. Uh, mythology, um, so that you can go and check it out. It is actually one. It was a college book. Um, my stepson had it for uh, mythology class, and we kept it because I was intrigued by it. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. Um, be sure to. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you did. That way I know you want to see more of these. Um, feel free to leave any comments below. Questions, <clears throat> I'll be more than 
happy to answer them to the best of my ability or at least get you um, into the right direction to get you an answer for that. Um, so I look forward to seeing you all next week. Um, we got videos coming every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, Friday being our informational series. And you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.